In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise to the ends of the earth. Sing to the Lord and tell of God's wonderful salvation. Declare God's glory among all nations and to all peoples. Honor and majesty belong to the Lord. God's strength and righteousness are to be greatly praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us remain standing. Our first hymn is 279, Infant, Holy, Infant, Lowly. Is there anyone else to lift up this morning? Yes. Oh, uh, Diane is back home. Uh, she got home, was it yesterday? Yesterday. Oh, yes, ma'am. Andy and his family have traveled to South Dakota this weekend to be with Susan's parents. And I just ask y'all to pray for traveling mercies. Okay, traveling mercies. Let us then go to God in prayer. Almighty God, as we have come in your house today, we are thankful for your presence. As we have gathered about 
that you would be with us, strengthen us, help us. In this Sunday after Christmas, let us not forget the Christmas story. Let us not forget of Jesus the Christ child. Let us not forget of all of these wonderful things and help us to celebrate the whole year. Help us to continue to remember that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And on this Sunday, as we celebrate your presence among us, help us to remember and to praise your glorious name. Help us to continue to focus upon your kingdom, O oh God. There are many times that we fall short of your glory. We do not live as we should, and we need you greatly. And we ask that you be with those that we have lifted up today in a special way because you know the needs of all people. And you know these requests that are unspoken as well that are on our hearts and our minds. Healing comes from your mighty hands, O oh God. And we thankful for the fact that you are with us, leading us and guiding us. Help us to focus on you during this Christmas season. And help us to continue to keep our hearts and minds focused on serving one another. Oh God, you are a great help and source of strength. We thank you for your presence among us. Help us to go forth with your spirit leading us and guiding us. And now we pray as Christ Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time, I'd like for our children to come forward, for the children's. Exercising. Uh, a lot of people do uh, drinking more water, eating better, uh, and some people even decide that they want to read the Bible or get more into God's Word. Well, sometimes when we make these goals, it's hard for us. Like we get so excited that we're doing something new, and then a day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, and sometimes we get slack and we forget to do it, or we get too busy in our daily lives that we forget to do these goals. And then we're like, oh man, I've already messed up, I can't do it again, but do you know what? It doesn't take a new year to start a new goal. You can take any day and do something new. So if you notice outside on my sign, or our church sign, it says put prayer in the new year. So anytime you have these goals that you set for yourself, maybe you want to do better at school. Maybe you want to make a new friend. If you put prayer and you ask God, can you help me with this? And when I become slack and I forget to or I get too lazy or something comes up, maybe if you would help me to get better in the routine. So we can always put prayer in our daily lives to help us with new beginnings. So you don't have to wait on a new year. You can just start, hey, I was slack yesterday. I decided to watch TV instead of reading my Bible. God, help me make more time for you. And that can be your prayer. Well, Robin Caskey got each of you, if you've decided to put more water in your diet, 
Each of you get a cool little cup. So you can go up here and get your cup. Make sure you're telling that. Christ promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen.
reading from the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, the first through the seventh verses. What I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time has come fully, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into the hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but are God's child since you are his child. God made you also an heir. Sanctify us through your words, your words are truth, O Lord. Join with me and let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. As our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us with many good and wonderful gifts, let us return a portion of those gifts to Almighty God. before your altar bearing gifts 
reminded of the wise men of old bringing gifts to the Christ child. We return just a portion of what you've already blessed us with, O God, and we ask that your spirit would come upon these gifts, that you would multiply them for the upbuilding of this church and for God's your kingdom here upon this earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And from St. Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, the 22nd through the 40th verses. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was the custom the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising in many of Israel, And it will be a sign spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee and their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. The word of God For the people of God, thanks be to God. You may be seated.
You know, I'm always amazed um, with conversations that that evolve, revolve around age. How, um, and it seems like people often ga- guess my age to be much older. Um, is what it is. Um, I like to think of it because I'm so mature and not that I look that way. Uh, however, this week, um, Wilson and I were talking about video games, and I said to him, uh, I said, oh, I remember when that uh, that game came out, and in fact, I got that for Christmas back in 1991, and he said, uh, wow, Dad, I didn't know you were alive way back then. It was a good moment, so I decided to treasure that. But what, when it comes to age, I found, we often, it's a matter of perspective. You know, when you're young, you think people are a certain age or old. And things happened long ago. And I remember um, one of the interesting things for me um, as a young Boy was talking to my great grandfather who remembered his grandmother as a child who was born in like the 1840s. And thinking about such things takes me to this gospel lesson today where you have people who were expecting this Savior for so long. And often we do a lot of complaining about the climate of the world in which we live in. You know, I kind of wonder sometimes when it comes to, to politics and things of that nature, if these have not been eternal problems since governments first started coming up. Because the people of Israel, and to me this is, is more realistic um, than it has been in quite some time because as all of you know, there is a war going on right now in Israel. And in these areas that we talk about a lot in our study of the Bible, this is going on today, right now. As it was the same tensions many years ago. And so this area, a strip of land, has has been in conflict for years and years. But in Jesus' time, the Romans were the overlords of the area. And they often put local leaders like Herod, there's more than one Herod, and these Herods are, um, they're local Jewish leaders, but who are under the, uh, the authority of Rome. And so there's a lot of tension in this area. The Romans have been in control for quite some time. And as the people have long since waited for this Savior, what happens next is is, is so amazing. We have had at this point that Jesus' birth, and in this particular gospel, we have the shepherds who have come to him, and now he's being presented in the temple. This starts out normal. In fact, you hear this in many ways. When the time came for the purification rites as required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him. Because it makes it clear in the Gospels that he is the firstborn son and there are certain requirements that have to be made for Jewish law. And they are following what is the normal tradition and how this should happen. And they take him to the temple to present him. And this is not the least bit unusual. This has happened to so many other firstborn sons because that's what you do to fulfill the law. Because the firstborn son was held with such esteem that they actually belonged to God. And so that you offered a sacrifice of these doves in order to pay for their atonement. And so they go and it's there that they meet Simeon who is an elderly and devout Jewish person. 
who it says the Spirit was upon him and it was revealed to him that he would not die until this text says the Lord's Messiah, some translates as the Christ, and he's moved by the Spirit and is upon seeing the child Jesus, he realizes this. And this is where our text takes this powerful transition because it says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen salvation. He immediately knew upon seeing Jesus that Jesus was the Christ that he was the Messiah, that he was that long-awaited Savior. Mary and Joseph were not looking for anything out of the ordinary that day. And then, to make things even more magnificent, they have a similar encounter with Anna, who is a, a prophet who spends her time at the temple so she was married for seven years, and then after that, she continued to live at the temple. She was very devout as well of the tribe of Asher and never left the temple, but worshiped God, praying night and day, fasting and praying. And then she, too, gave thanks to God for seeing the Christ. And I think this thanks to me is what's so important this day. How often do we truly thank God for our salvation? Do we say thank you that he sent us Christ? Or do we focus too much on what we have or what we don't have? Instead of thinking about the salvation that we have, that we have seen the Savior. We are really quite fortunate if you think about it. The people who we read about often in the Bible were living these exact things. But we know the whole story. The in and outs of how it is put in together. And that's such a wonderful thing to behold. To know the Christ and to know that no matter what we have in this life or don't have, no matter how many possessions we have, they pale in comparison to knowing the Christ. And now this is something to focus on. I think too often, and I'm guilty of this myself, that my prayer they often focus on the petitions. You know, prayer is, is praising God, of thanking God. It's not just of asking of God, but it's very easy to fall into this routine of asking God for more and more and asking God for things rather than focusing on what we should and praising God and magnifying his glorious name because the plans of God are far greater than the plans that we could have for ourselves and God wants things to happen he wants more people to know his son Christ Jesus how often are we really jubilant with knowing Christ. It says Mary and Joseph had done everything required by the law of the Lord, and they returned to Galilee to their town of Nazareth. And there the child becomes strong, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Something magnificent is happening. And then this will transition the next part of the story would be whenever the boy Jesus is at the temple. A lot of years pass in between in this moment. But I wonder sometimes, how often do we see the Christ and we don't realize it? 
because we're not looking for the Christ or we're expecting the Christ to come in a different way than what we have predetermined. We're not as maybe joyful as we should be. We're not as strong as we should be. We're not ready for what is required and asked of us. But it is through Christ that we become heirs of God. And this text from Galatians this morning says, if you're an underaged heir, it means that you have no control. And this happened a lot, a lot in the society in which the early church and Jesus lived because the mortality rate was very high. And you would have a sickness that went around and whole families would die and there might be a young minor heir who had no control over their lives. In fact, on up into the Middle Ages, that was a, um, a very important and lucrative thing to be a guardian of someone who was a minor. They had almost no control until they came of age. And to the church in Galatia, Paul is, is pointing this out. But it is through Christ that we come into our own because we are sons adopted into sonship, that we are a part of, that we're no longer a slave, but God's child and is the heir of God, heir to salvation. And we have to wait no longer. Advent, as we've talked about and went through, is the preparation time. The preparation is over. We are celebrating the Christ. And the season of Christmas continues till Epiphany which is just a 12 days. But yet we continue to worship the whole year round. We continue to acknowledge that the Christ child is in our hearts and in our minds and that we follow Jesus Christ. And that is so important that we continue to focus upon Christ and not upon ourselves The salvation that we receive comes from the hands of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. I don't like to say too much about New Year's resolutions. They can be easily broken. And in fact, I thought it was very poignant what Laura said this morning about that we don't have to wait until New Year's. But I ask of you, have you seen Christ lately? Where do you feel the presence of Christ at right now? Do you feel close? Are you acknowledging that your Savior is walking with you hand in hand? Or does Christ feel distant? Because if Christ feels distance from us this morning, Ask what you can do to quit pushing him away because Christ wants to be close to us. God cares enough to send his Savior, I mean his Son, as the Savior to us. So we need to not push away. If we feel distance this morning from the Almighty, let us welcome him to our hearts and minds. Let us acknowledge the blessing of Christmas daily. Not once a year, but daily. Let us praise God and allow God to work through us and allow our hearts to sing and the Spirit to flow. Because it's a beautiful thing when we see God's Spirit flowing through us and using our gifts and abilities to make the church a better place. And we have to ask what is best for the body of Christ and asking are we serving and how can we serve 
And what can we do because the long wait is over? None of us like waiting. There's, there's nothing worse. Now, I've always found that if I have a book with me or, or a magazine or something to entertain me, it seems like that I never even get a chance to wait if I'm prepared for it, especially if I'm at a chapter that I want to finish or some such thing. But especially if I've ever been sick and gone to the doctor on a flight with nothing, it seems like the wait is forever. And sometimes I've looked at my watch and it has been much longer when we're not prepared for it. But we don't like waiting and that's fine. The wait is over. The Savior is among us and dwelling with us. So let us celebrate that today. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these words of Scripture, the comfort they bring to us and the challenges. Help us that we might serve you as best as we're able. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Let us stand for our final hymn, number 271, Joyful, Joyful. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with both each of you both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>